I'm calling together the meeting of the planning board on, oh gosh, what is today? The 15th of November, 2021. <clears throat> Meetings usually held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the public meeting law. MGL chapter 30A section 20 meetings typically are broadcast on FCAT and remote meeting connections are noted on our town of Deerfield website, deerfieldma.us. So we are called to order with a reminder of our meeting guidelines to um, speak one at a time, follow our Deerfield code of conduct by being respectful, considerate and courteous. We want to try to be concise, non-repetitive, and recognized by the chair. I was in another meeting and um, their statement was, be comfortable letting someone else speak your truth. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so instead of non-repetitive, well, you know, mm. anyway, mm. I thought that was a, a nice way of saying, don't repeat other people. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, board members in attendance, Rachel Blaine, who is here, muted? Here, yes. here, here, here. Andrew Leifson. Here. Kathy Sylvester. Here. Kathy Watroba. Here. And Mary Cloutier. Here. Denise Mason. Here. And Annalie Wolfgold. I'll have to say that I think we have had a remarkable string of good attendance. I mean, I think we just need to acknowledge that, right? Mm -hmm. We have. Yeah, let's keep it up, but it's good. Do we get a prize um, for that, Annalie? Prizes? Do we get a prize for that? No? Yeah, you get to come okay. to the next meeting. <gasps> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Rachel was just mentioning that she did send out the minutes at the last <clears throat> minute. I don't know if everyone has had a chance to look at them yet. or I haven't sent them to everybody, just you. Oh, I got them. Oh, oh I, good. I, I then sent good. a few, sent, oh, sent them good. forward and kind of thought, oh gosh, did I get them to everyone? Oh, good, good, good. Um, well, um, did everyone have a chance to, re did people have a chance to review them? If not, I don't think it's going to be terrible for us to defer to the next meeting. Um, did people review the minutes? Were yeah. they able to? Change? What I didn't do was put in all of what I'd love to do. And there were a couple of things that Linda was going to send us her slide right. deck. I didn't see the slide deck. I would have hyperlinked it. So that would be nice uh, because every it was an informational meeting. Anne Mary, there you go. Since you weren't there, this is a good thing. There's, it was an informational meeting and a slide deck would have given you the a, a very good overview just to read the slide deck. So to review everything that she said per se, I wrote more about what we asked, what questions we asked and and some of her answers. And then there were a couple of things that she was gonna get back to us with, um, which I don't know that she did or not. So, but it's recorded what she said she would get back to us with, right. so that's good. Well, why don't, we, um, why don't we hold off and hopefully we'll get answers to that. I did um, make note or that you can make note um, in terms of solar, the owners have been slow in complying, complying with the review requirement. It's not that they have been out of compliance. Oh, I thought you said that. two years out of compliance. Uh, well, so I actually were, was gonna ask then, you about that. Yeah, they were, and then they they made up the two years. They, I guess they, I don't know if they've done it previously and hadn't sent it to us or uh, anyway, they sent us the last two. So. so they are in compliance. It's just that it was not within. Well, they are. Yeah, you know, we're talking about this a little bit at today's meeting, but um, they are in compliance with sending their annual review. Okay. Uh, All right. Annual I will, review. I'll amend that. Right. Um, and then um, this is everybody the large solar array, and that's part of their agreement. Is that it's part of it's a it's a condition that they would give us an annual report. Report. Right. Um, and the other thing, which also is, will be part of our discussion today in relation to the A&R, um, that's part of our agenda today under mail. Um, but um, apparently, and Jen, you can elaborate if you need to, but we, we were under the impression that we could have conditions with an A&R, and in fact, we can't. 
Mm-hmm. Those were our comments. We can that we can't ask that that be notated on the plans. I know we've done that before. You I can, know we've done that more than once before. You can put on, you can write something on the plan, but you can't make a condition of them oh. to change something. So the, the thing that I guess, you know, I was, when I was looking at the notes and to be mm-hmm. honest with you, you're right. I, I, so, but we can put on the plans that lot A, parcel A was not a bit of the lot, which it wasn't, it isn't. Right. And that so should then, be noted. Right. You can note it, but then it's up to, it'll be filed at the registry of deeds. <clears throat> and then when they, mm-hmm. when they want to build something on it, that's when it would come back and the building, the, you know, commissioner or yeah. building inspector would mm-hmm you know, review the plan and say, it doesn't meet the requirements because zoning changes. So at the time that you do it, it's not a buildable lot. It doesn't mean that in the future it wouldn't mm. come. Mm. Right, but that's to- when the ANR, when it's an ANR, it's endorsed and we're saying it's not a buildable <laughs> lot. I know we've done right. that before. Yeah, yeah, you can write that on there, but it's yeah. not a condition. Okay. So who writes that on there now? I mean, and has it, in fact, I don't know, we've received all the signatures. I know Sue was saying she needed, I think it was Sue, that she needed an additional signature. Has it already been sent off somewhere without that being written on it yet? Emily? Yes, Denise? I don't know whether we even need to do that because the the two things were the building A, okay, no, no one can build on that until Bob Builder decides whether it's a buildable lot. And then also the other issue was having that barn that was also on lot two, I believe. And <clears throat> once again, that is up to Bob to say, <clears throat> no, you can't do that until that is removed. So that's really out of our purview. I would think it just goes back onto Bob. So do we really need to put anything on that? On the but we end? created a non-buildable lot. So we created lot A. That's yeah. why I feel that because that was not a, a lot until we created it. Okay. So that's why I feel like in the creation of it, it should be noted that it's not, mm-hmm. build, it does not have the frontage. Um, Sometimes okay. it makes it, 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 it's a notation on it that raises a flag to somebody that would be purchasing it in the future, because then it would be like, okay, well, why does it say that? Well, it says that because at the time it didn't meet certain requirements. However, it has no frontage. Right, yeah. right. So, and, and also I just want to remind everyone that the number of new parcels lots was left blank. And we put that down too. And, a- and we said, are we saying two, there are two lots or is there one? And They're so- creating two. But, but again, it was left blank. So that's that's one of those things that I need to remind the whole building department, Sue and Bob and all of them, that we really need a pre-submittal meeting for everything. And that's what we put on, you know, so that we go through an application, the application is filled out completely. Before it gets submitted, before it's stamped in, it we need to have a pre-submittal meeting. And I was just talking to Casey about that today or yesterday we were... Was it yesterday? What day is it? Monday? Well, anyway, <laughs> someday we were talking and I was saying that's really something that we I need to remind them not to take in applications and stamp them. And it's going to be something that's going to take even the public time to um, get used to because they're going to be like, what do you mean? I've, I've always done this. And you're rejecting my application. No, it says on our application, pre-submittal meeting required. Mm-hmm. So that way we have all of the things like, <clears throat> just like what you were saying, Andrea, it didn't say that it was making two lots. So, anyway. so back then to somebody writing on the plans that building A is not a buildable lot. Lot A. Lot, lot A. A is not a buildable lot and lot B. Do we need to say that about lot B? I mean, we we're saying lot B you needs to have the barn removed prior to any building. That's, that's what Bob would. Bob would do it anyway. Yeah. Okay. So we're only talking about lot A to write something down. So can I, I do that? I think she did write. Didn't didn't Sue write? Because I saw that she tried to write stuff on there. Um. Because didn't you come in? Jen, Andrea and how about it? this, Jen? If you can check check with the actual mylar. Yeah. And if something needs to be written in, I can come in at the end of this week. Yeah. So you let me know. 
it will also have to check the time frame because it needs to be filed before a certain days. So I don't know when you're. Okay. So, so Denise is the backup. Ago. Two weeks ago. Okay. So this would be the week that it needs to be filed. in. so I don't know who needs to be there to and sign. Tomorrow, Jen. Pardon me. Well, I can come in tomorrow and sign that. If you already signed it, Denise. You well, did. Oh, no. Oh, oh just, but you said to. But no, in no terms one. of, I mean, can, in terms of writing down the building a, a lot A is not a buildable lot. Yeah, let me look and see because Sue did write some things in. I, I saw that she had written something because we were talking about the pen that she was using because I think that we should have a Sharpie on all Mylars and it shouldn't be a regular pen. It's just, it's so much clearer. Like I should, I'll, I'll have Pat order us some fine point my um, <clears throat> Sharpies to, and just sign with that. I believe I was the third signer and I did sign with a Sharpie. Yes. I gave it to you. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> That's why I had it. Yeah. All right. Um, as we're um, actually flipping around the, the agenda a bit, um, election of clerk with the uh, thanks to Anne Mary, we're, um, we understand when. Life gets crazy and people need to step up and step back. And right now, thank you for what you've done with the minutes. And um, we understand for you stepping back now. And um, so I will put out there that we do need an interim clerk. <laughs> uh, in June is when we have our annual election of officers. And um, so, the office would be open at that point again. Um, there is a, actually, I was just saw today, I have a one page checklist of um, requirements from the Attorney General's office, uh, Massachusetts Attorney General, for um, things that need to be included. And so it's not onerous if, and Mary, if you want to speak to that. Um, uh, so, we sure like to have some volunteers if there aren't any. Uh, we'll see what our so, interesting we can do. Yes, Denise. I'm not volunteering for that. But. <laughs> Denise, uh, Denise, yes, thank you. I know Wait. that when we when we no, 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 I've got I've got enough. Um, but when we came to um, doing the annual report, that is something that I know, Anne Mary, that we discussed, and I don't know what if you've been doing anything all along, but that's something that we have to consider that when it comes time to the annual report, that we have the information to put in so it's possibly a little meatier than what we did this year. So, you know, that's something else to consider. So the clerk needs to make sure that's that true. you have that's that information to put in. And I, so, I mean, Denise and I tag teamed with Anne Mary last year too. Yeah. Um, and so it can be a, you know, supportive project. Right, it's and, really and it should fun. be right. People are people are flawed. People make mistakes. So more than yeah, one yeah. set of eyes is a good thing to have. Um, typically, you know, you get the agenda. You, I mean, I can share all of the past agendas with you. I can share all of the past minutes with you since I've been the clerk. Um, uh, typically, I just rip down the agenda. Um, I copy it as a new document, I put it in the minutes folder. And as we go, um, I take minutes. And if I miss anything important, I go back and I watch um, the YouTube. That can be onerous, you know, it, once I, it's nice that we have new um, norms of etiquette because it was a little hard to follow there for a while. Um, uh, but yeah, I have a lot going on right now. So I need to, and I've done it for a long time. And I'm happy to do it again in the future, but I have a lot going on in my life right now. Um, I've said, yeah. yeah. Pregnant. Do you do this? Pause. Anybody who doesn't put their finger on their nose is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Denise is uh, our vice chair. So we'll take also on the capital improvements the plan committee. And I'm right, doing that. Take you off the docket for this. I'm just crappy at it. I'd be happy to do it. I just am bad at it, just so you know. No, no, Rachel. Not right out there. You should, you should have a positive <laughs> attitude, Rachel. I should. Okay. I should, and I don't. That's the thing. <laughs> but 
<laughs> I'm happy to do it if that is if, if somebody what? else doesn't want to step forward. I mean, for a very temporary time, mm. like till till you complain so much that you fire me and you find somebody better. <laughs> All right. Uh, can we have a nomination for Rachel Blaine as clerk? I nominate Rachel Blaine as clerk. Here. Temporary <laughs> clerk. Temporary. Super temporary. I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? All right. So um, let's see. Rachel Blaine? We'll, we'll have a Thanks, vote. Rachel Blaine? Oh. Okay. Uh, Andrea Leibson? Andrea Leibson, aye. Uh, Kathy Sylvester? Yes. Thank Kathy Matroba? Kathy Matroba, aye. And Mary Cloutier? And Mary Cloutier, aye. Denise Mason? Denise Mason, aye. And Emily Wolfkull makes it unanimous. Thank you very much, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. Rachel. All right. So, um, <laughs> old business, and actually, um, uh, Chris Curtis, who is on our um, agenda for the evening, uh, has another meeting. He's hopping off up to come here. So I said, hey, no problem. We can just go forward with um, some of our things. And then when he comes, he'll come. Um, we do still need to make a decision about our meeting format for December 6th. Um, to my knowledge, the new equipment has not been received and or really vetted. So are we still... Um, up for remote on December 6th. Oh, Jennifer? It has been received. It's set up, but it's not hooked up. Okay, so December 6th, which is two weeks from now. Um, remote? Can, can I ask a question? Oh. Yes. Can I ask a question, Jen? So who needs to hook it up? Well, um, <clears throat> we're being recorded. So I called, um, <laughs> I emailed Kevin Murphy, who is the school's IT person that works with FCAP. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to come and train somebody, ask me somebody. And he um, said that Jonathan was going to. And mm -hmm. I told Trevor and Trevor said, let me get back in touch with Kevin. So that's where we stand. Cause I came back and I'm like, so is it up and running? Awesome. Nope, it's set up, but it's, <laughs> it's just sitting there. So okay. it could be, and if so we'll, it is, then I can tell y'all and we can change it from remote to hybrid or. I, mean, I, th I think, uh, you know, it's only two weeks from now. There's a few meetings to get it under their belts instead of ours. So I would propose that we do remote for our December 6th meeting. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll do remote for our December 6th meeting. And um, we did vote at our last um, meeting that um, our, our working meeting for updating our planning board binder was going to be delayed until um, uh, January 3rd, our January 3rd meeting at 6.15. So maybe that would be our hope is that our January 3rd meeting could be, would be in person because obviously if we're gonna be there shuffling papers and mm -hmm. putting things in our binder, we need to be there. So I do it hybrid though, the third. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okie dokie. Um, pending issues. Um, we did have pending the 71 Main Street site plan review application, which is incomplete, and that has been completed. So um, thank you, Jen, for your assistance with that. And um, we're glad that that's off our pending list. Um, uh, there was a question also last week about who would be the enforcement authority for medium and large scale solar installations. And um, again, with some thanks to Jen and other folks, there was investigation on that. And the building inspector is the enforcement officer for the uh, deficiencies that are found on the annual reports for the She's frozen. Uh oh. So we spoke, and so it would be the building commissioner that would make sure that anything is um, insufficient, and he could, you know, once he gets his report, he could he could do an enforcement, and he would let the planning board know. 
Does somebody want to text her? <laughs> Probably knows. Got it, Denise. So. Okay. Yeah, just texted her. <clears throat> huh. Okay, she'll be back. I think her family lives out of... On a farm. Uh, yeah, so on a farm. I, oh, was it? Okay, yeah. So, I think Rural she internet. Been. That's what's going to pick up now. We've got trillions of do trillion dollars to fix rural internet. Okay. I used to live in Shootsbury. That was uh, no. <laughs> dial up. Yep. No, oh, she's logging on her phone now. Okay. All right. Fine. Well, can I can I ask while we're, we're sitting here if people have gone to look at the lots um, on Gromacki Avenue? Yes, I, I did too. Mm -hmm. Okay, just it's interesting. Um, what is the? She's got the the next item is list of priorities. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I could, it just says priorities. Um, so we had a phone conversation for probably 45 minutes before this call and we, she had sent me several emails um, asking about a list of priorities and sort of going through it. And that's what she was gonna talk about, basically site, going over the site plan review and special permit applications and the way that we wanna process, go through that. Like, how are we gonna do that? So my suggestion was um, if everybody can go before the January meeting, I believe we said, um, and, and print out the site plan review application from our website and mark it up and send it to me. Okay. So don't send it to everybody, just send it to me with yeah. what you would think would be suggestions to add or take away. Um, I'm going to also do the same and look through it and talk to Sue and Bob um, and, and really see what are the most important things that they would like to see on it. We, Bob is in, in particular important to be involved in this process because of our new bylaws that have gone into effect. So with, with, so there's things that are missing, um, even with our special permit application and the special permit is not on our website yet. And I will ask Sue tomorrow to, um, uh, put that so you can also print we can sort of do those two applications. We're looking at that as well. And then also, because we did this with Pat Smith, the infamous Pat Smith years ago, yeah. in terms of um, where, with the site plan review, where else it needs to go, like the path of it, like your, what you're talking about, the yes. pre, um, submittal meeting. So where yeah. it might travel. So also that there's some co-board board cooperation on certain meetings that could be expediting the process yes um, given a simple or straightforward site plan review for example mm -hmm. um yeah and and that is part of the site plan review application is that sort of chart, chart that and right. that needs to be updated so yeah. we discussed that Right. Maybe Denise, you want to text her and have her just call in. Yeah, she yeah. could just. Yeah. There she is. Oh, good. Hi. Yeah. You did. Uh oh, frozen again. Uh oh. <laughs> Very unfortunate too. That is my good. There's a face you must never make. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Annalie, stop. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, everything okay? Somebody's. That's my phone. I'm getting called out. I'm... Oh no. Okay. She's off and on call. One. 
Hey, Jen, just, I'm sorry, just continue that conversation about site plan review. We did, we did decide that prior to uh, discussing the site plan review that we would all go out and check out the site before. So that's something new that we, I don't know if that was done in the past on a consistent basis, but I think we decided to do that. Yeah, site visits are always really good to do. You just can't obviously talk to each other about it. Right. Or you can go individually, but yeah. Um, you yeah, just can't that always would... all get everybody there. That's the problem. Well, true. Well, so can we do it informally and, in, in, you know, by going to visit ourselves? I wouldn't see why not. It's just sometimes if strange people are showing up on people's property, sometimes <laughs> when it's a group, like if you maybe something that would be good is if you could, if we would tell the applicants, you know, the week prior to the meeting, there'll be people coming to just take a look. So, um, right. I mean, I recall being in a site plan review site survey and we just didn't talk to each other. Yeah, we've done it. I've, I've been yeah. to many that it's fine. We just go and take a look. I don't and... know. Sorry for that power interruption. I don't know where we were at. I guess I'll just go back um, to finish the thread on, on solar. And then I don't know where you were with the site plan where that discussion came from, but um, <laughs> the, um, there, the, our annual reports from medium and large scale solar are due 45 days after the beginning of the calendar year. And so um, men may have this for the minutes that, um, that we would, uh, Ha asked the uh, has Superlet to put on her calendar to send out now a letter to the uh, solar people owners um, saying that the that the uh, twofold that the annual report is due 45 days after January 1st and that we are anticipating that deficiencies from prior reports have been, will have been corrected by then. That sound okay for the planning board? And they are due to who? Who right. is to receive them? Um, our site, plan, our solar bylaws have probably I don't know different uh, bodies. The select board, board of health, building commissioner, okay, okay, police, gotcha. fire department. <clears throat> yeah, so there's quite a few. Annalee. So. Do you want to just okay. call in? Yes, do you, yes. Do you want to just call in because you keep breaking up? Yeah. And then Chris can get started. What is the, um, I didn't copy down. What is the meeting ID number? Um, let me, I have to go to I it. I need the meeting ID. Oh, thank you. Hold on. <laughs> oh, there. Look, it's up on the screen. Look at Andrea's um, face. <laughs> Annalee. Okay. Uh, keep it there and we do not move. 911-604-1580. Okay. Got it. And the passcode is 570012. Okay. Um, so I'm going to hear me at all now. Can you hear me? No. You're broken up. Okay, Chris, introduce yourself. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hello, good evening, everybody. <laughs> Am I on now? Is it you I... are, Chris. <laughs> okay. Well, Annalie asked me to come and talk to you about um, the town's MVP program, which is Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness, and uh, how it might intersect with the planning board and activities that we might be working on together. So I'm going to attempt to share my screen with you now. Uh, I have a PowerPoint presentation to go, run through. Can you see that? Not yet. Hmm. Maybe it'll take a little bit. No. Let's try it again. Yeah, 
There we go. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. So uh, we've been working for um, five years on um, climate resiliency and mitigation work for for the town. Um, and really, there's kind of two parts to to this. Um, mitigation is um, really trying to address the issues of climate change and what local actions can be taken to reduce our share of the impact to climate change. And resiliency um, is about what can the town do to address the potential impacts of climate change on the town and how can we best prepare for that. So. Um, some of you may have seen this presentation before, but I'm gonna just run through some of these slides kind of quickly. Um, it's pretty clear that in Massachusetts, like everywhere else, our climate's already changing. Uh, the temperature is increasing, our growing seasons are getting longer. There's evidence of sea level rise and we have uh, much stronger storms um, happening in um, our area. And some of the projections for Western Massachusetts are that our rainfall um, annually is gonna increase by mid-century from 50 um, inches per year now to 57 inches. And the number of large storms is gonna increase from uh, seven to 11 annually, again, by 2050. And um, by mid-century, if we don't take um, dramatic steps to change things, our climate will be similar to Northern Virginia. And by the end of the century, we'll look more like, like South Carolina. We also expect to have a lot more severe storms, similar to the type that we had 10 years ago with, with uh, Tropical Storm Irene. Um, I'm sure we all remember some of the impacts of that. Um, and, you know, just an enormous amount of damage and the I-91 bridge had to be rebuilt and lots of impacts to other um, areas of the community. So um, to address this, we have put together a municipal vulnerability preparedness plan. We did that in 2018. Uh, we had a townwide workshop that helped to foster input to that. And um, we actually finished the plan and got approved as the first MVP certified community in Massachusetts, um, which put us in pretty good stead for the next phase of the MVP program. Once you get through the, the planning process, you're eligible for what they call action grants. And um, we were able to take advantage of, of being kind of ahead of, of the game and, and other communities. So um, our plan identified what the top hazards were for the community. Uh, which were floods and dam failures, tornadoes and windstorms, hurricanes and tropical storms, and severe winter storms and ice storms. Uh, we went through a process of identifying some of the key vulnerable things in town. Um, I'm not gonna go through a lot of detail on all of these, but there's um, a variety of things that we identified as being vulnerable. And then we developed a, an action strategy that um, talked about what steps we wanted to take to address those vulnerabilities. And that ranged from replacing culverts to protecting our floodplains, to working on emergency um, flood evacuation plans and a whole variety of other strategies. Um, so once we had that plan adopted and it got it um, adopted by the select board and approved by the state, and as I said, we got this approval for for MVP certification, we were then able to apply for action grants and we have now applied for and received four of those action grants in um, totaling now uh, $1,294,000 in, in funds for, for projects that uh, the town's been able to work on and do um, on this topic. And we've also established a, um, ongoing MVP core group, which um, has been expanded to also become the green infrastructure committee in town. And that has uh, representatives from most of the department heads and many of uh, the town boards are represented, including the planning board, which Annalee is your representative um, on that committee. 
Um, so some of the projects, just really briefly, that we've done, um, we've replaced uh, two of the main problem culverts in town, one on Mill Village Road, where we had a collapsed culvert and a, a road that wasn't functioning um, with a what's called an open bottom culvert that is set up for enabling fish and wildlife passage and designed to accommodate the larger storms we expect with climate change. You can kind of see the before and after pictures here of what it uh, what it looked like before when it was flooding and the kind of nicely designed um, thing that we replaced it with. And similarly at uh, Kelleher Drive, we had a collapsing culvert and uh, replace that with the same type of um, open bottom culvert there. We've also done a lot of work on green streets and green infrastructure. We adopted a new town policy on green infrastructure and climate resiliency, which has um, got a, a large number of components to it that we're working actively on with committee members. We've on several um, levels been working on greening our streets uh, we put in tree box filters in the town center. Um, there's six of those that we've installed. And um, we've put rain gardens in at the Deerfield Elementary School. And we have designs for others in other locations in town like historic Deerfield. We've also finished designs for green parking lots at the high school and at the Leary lot in the town center. Those um, hopefully will be built at some point. Um, We've updated the floodplain zoning and developed um, a detailed river land conservation plan for identifying the properties in the floodplain that um, would be targeted for land acquisition and land protection efforts. We've uh, worked with Historic Deerfield and the schools up in that area to develop a flood evacuation plan in the event of a catastrophic dam failure on the Deerfield River and uh, implemented the new rave alert system for emergencies in town. And we've done a lot of work on public outreach and education with the schools. We have uh, held a really successful townwide climate forum, um, which was two years ago, and now we're gonna hold another one in February of 2022. I've been working actively with the Frontier High School teachers on a climate curriculum and implementing that. And we designed a green parking lot for the high school. And again, at the elementary school did rain gardens and a tree box filter. And we designed an entirely new entryway for the elementary school that's a, a green um, entryway that um, we're hoping ultimately to get constructed. So that brings me to um, elements of the planning board's participation with the MVP program. As you as you know well, we've we've worked on a number of bylaws already um, and gotten those successfully adopted at town meeting, including the floodplain bylaw, the new green development performance standards and site plan, and the solar bylaw. Um, so what comes next? Um, some elements of participation going forward. As I mentioned, we have this new Green Infrastructure Committee. It meets monthly. And one of the things that the committee is empowered to do is to review new development projects, whether they are private development projects that might be coming through the planning board for a special permit or site plan approval, or whether they're town-sponsored development projects like the new town park. And so establishing kind of a, a clear process for how those projects get referred out for review um, by the Green Infrastructure Committee and then in a timely way, getting those comments back to the planning board so that you can hopefully use those is one of the things that we're talking about. And as part of that, it's come up that um, there in our site plan and our special permit bylaws, there isn't really a formal referral process required um, to other town boards, but I guess there is a there is a policy to do that. So we discussed whether that, you know, was sufficient and people felt like the policy was okay, that that was enough. Um, but just trying to make sure that that works smoothly and that there is, in fact, 
um, comments that come back from the other town boards and departments is one of the things to to talk further about. And then um, there is the potential for taking a look at the town subdivision regulations. There's some things that could address um, both climate mitigation and climate resiliency in subdivision um, regulations, particularly mm -hmm. trying to orient um, new subdivisions so that there's a solar orientation and more opportunity to do passive solar design and then designing streets so that they're um, green streets when they get built, um, which means basically trying to recharge the stormwater from those streets on site to the extent possible, um, tree planting, um, also making sure that there's an opportunity for bicycle and pedestrian um, access. And then um, we have a new program under this current grant for MVP that includes a, com a component on healthy the Healthy Soils Initiative, which is a it's a new state initiative to try to look at um, how do we um, acknowledge, identify, and protect the most important soils in our communities that um, provide a really important function of of carbon sequestration within the soil. Um, it's part of the overall picture of how do we address um, the problem of carbon and um, soils are an important place for, for, for doing that. So we are going to be working with a, another consulting team called uh, Regenerative Design out of Greenfield and um, they are going to be doing some pretty detailed mapping and analysis of the town's soils and identifying those areas that are most important in town. Um, and then we'll be trying to come up with um, specific strategies for how to um, protect um, and enhance those soils. Some of those strategies will, will involve the planning board and some examples um, potentially of what we might look at, and this is nothing's decided at this point, we're just getting started on this project, but some of the things we might recommend to the town would be things like post-construction soil restoration standards, trying to make sure that the soils after a large project is built still have the same um, capacity for soil mm -hmm. carbon sequestration and for um, attenuation of, of stormwater as they did before the, pro the site was disturbed. Um, soil erosion prevention and sedimentation controls, uh, farmland preservation and other natural resource preservation standards uh, might be on the sort of agenda to look at as well. So that's something we'll be moving forward with between now and um, when the grant ends, which is next uh, June, we'll be working with regenerative design and hopefully I'll have a chance to you know come back and present some more details to you as we kind of develop that project further. And then lastly, you know, just kind of thinking forward about the future, there, there might be an, another area that we could potentially work on, which would include um, the town has been trying to get going on complete streets um, for a number of years now, probably since we since I've been involved with the MVP program, we've been talking about complete streets and sort of merging complete streets and green streets together so that um, when we do our, you know, sort of redo the town center, we'll have um, streets that have bicycle and pedestrian components to them, but also have um, that sort of on-site stormwater um, component with tree planting that will green our streets and our town center up. And there may be an opportunity for the planning board to play an active role in this. Um, I think, um, you know, that's something worthy of discussion. And lastly, um, I mentioned that we did a, a pretty detailed land conservation plan for the Deerfield River floodplain area. And it's got a series of pretty specific recommendations for how to move forward on that, you know, land conservation effort but we don't really have an active group that's working on that in town. Um, 
So thinking through that a little bit, you know, does the planning board want to have a role in that? Um, or do we have suggestions for how to, you know, to, to move forward on, on that process? So those are just some ideas for kind of future contemplation and discussion, I guess. But I'll stop there and see if you guys have questions of, of any kind. I don't know, Chris, can you, can you hear me? I can. Oh, good. <laughs> I can't see anyone else um, to call on. Um, maybe if you go out of screen share now, we can see everyone. Okay. Um, it sounds to me when I'm thinking of the last slide that there are potentially two categories of planning board work or possible work. One is whether or not we as either a full board or individuals would be um, doing some review, participating in conversations. And then the second piece being whether or not we as a planning board would be proposing actual zoning bylaws changes. Is that is that kind of correct when you think of two categories of how we might be working together? Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's accurate. So then I would ask the question of in relation to the grant award, and I don't really, I don't know the details at all of the grant reward our award. Are there things that Deerfield needs to accomplish in order to receive the money that has been sort of awarded or designated mm -hmm. to us? Are there things that if the planning board doesn't do, um, then Deerfield is out X thousands of dollars? And, and if so, what are those things? Um, well, I guess the simple answer is no, there there aren't any things like that. Um, the, the Healthy Soils Initiative is the one component of the grant that um, directly involves the planning board, um, but the involvement in this grant in particular is just to um, be part of, there's gonna be a series of, of public workshops that will talk about um, what the findings are from the Healthy Soils Study and then some of the possible strategies for implementation, but th there's no component to actually develop and implement the bylaws. We'll, we'll just be, we'll come out of this with a plan and a series of strategies that then could be implemented with a future grant. Um, so, you know, we might, we might work on, um, we, we could work on some bylaws that could be up for future consideration. I, I would expect the plan to include um, some suggested language for bylaws. Um, and that could in incorporate some, you know, some dialogue with the planning board about what makes sense and what works for the town. And you're talking right now about the healthy soils? Yes, yes. Okay. Which yeah. are a little bit, that's a little bit more future than some of the other things that are on the checklist for MVP. Well, what's in the current grant? This current year's grant has four, four components. Um, we're going to be doing, um, I mentioned the healthy soils. We're going to be also doing a, a new climate forum in February, February 12th at the Frontier High School. We're doing um, Frontier High School climate curriculum, working with the teachers there. Uh, and that includes doing some, you know, some on-site work with students and, and um, you know, doing some signage and, and um, plantings. So really engaging the students pretty heavily. Um, so those are the, and then there's, um, and there's some reporting requirements and so forth. Um, and then there's the Green Infrastructure Committee, which, as you know, Annalee, being on it, that's um, an ongoing activity and um, a component to the grant is to support the Green Infrastructure Committee and, and move ahead with some of the initiatives there. So there isn't anything um, in the way of a requirement for a deliverable from the planning board, I guess is what I would say. Yeah. To you. Okay. All right, my, then my other question and then see what other questions people have is, I know that in our own 
review in the fall of various um, possible bylaw changes, um, updating the subdivision regulations is on that list. Um, I don't know how complex that is, <laughs> um, how big of a project that is to tackle. I mean, obviously in my mind, if we're talking about updating some bylaws, it would be that we would start working on those now with the, the goal being spring town, annual town meeting. So I don't know if of the things that you've talked about, if you have any suggestions to us, if it's the subdivision regs or if it's something else, I mean, complete streets, you know, working on things for that. I, I don't know. It's what, what could be doable? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question, I think. Um, the subdivision regulations, I think, are very doable. The things that I mentioned, um, which are, you know, primarily having some standards for solar orientation of the roads and for um, stormwater runoff um, and possibly for bicycle and pedestrian accommodation. I think that would be doable within the next, you know, nine months or so to develop those. And then it's not a town meeting issue for subdivision regulations. The planning oh, board's yeah. empowered to adopt the changes to the subdivision regulations. Um, so you don't go to town meeting with those. So that's so that's one that's you know I think pretty doable. Some of the other stuff is a, is probably a bit more longer term, but I think you know the longer term stuff is important too. When you're when you're a planning board, we're you know we're trying to plan for the town's future here and things like complete streets. Um, there's money out there that we could take advantage of, and uh, it, it would be to the town's benefit to do that, so. Are, can I ask, me ask a question? Are the complete yes, streets Andrea? And, and perhaps the money that's associated, the grant money that's available, is that for new streets only or is that for existing? Are you asking about complete streets money? Yeah, that's um, that's for existing streets. It's, um, it's through Mass Department of Transportation, MassDOT. Um, and, and the town has completed their initial plan for complete streets, but there, there's uh, several different stages in that program. I think we're between the first and the second stage, if I understand it correctly, where the town needs to now come up with some specific um, designs for um, what they want to actually build in the town center. And so they have to, the town needs to apply for that grant money for that next phase in order to do that. When we did the uh, climate forum two years ago, we had a, a big design charrette as part of that forum and was really well attended. And we had groups of people come up with some very creative ideas for how to green the town center and um, tree planting and um, bicycle and pedestrian accommodations and improved parking. Um, There's some great ideas that you know could very well be the type of thing that the town would want to pursue under that program but you do it through applying for another grant and then getting a, a landscape architect um, firm to uh, to do those designs and then you go back again for another grant to to actually get funding to help build it so with complete streets what would be the planning board's role well i think you know you you guys might be the impetus to try to Get this higher up on the priority list for for the town to pursue um ultimately the town's going to have to probably put some money aside to to pursue it um i think you know we've got limited staff in in town hall and they're completely overburdened with lots of other things going on so question might be who's gonna you know who's gonna actually take the lead on this and um write the grant and you know move forward with it i, I don't know jen if, if you're on on still on the uh in the meeting if you want to say anything about what what the thought process might be you know about this from your perspective hmm <laughs> <laughs> i don't have an opinion i mean i would have to check with casey and to see what you know the select board 
you know, wants to do and how they would move forward because <clears throat> you've been doing the grant writing and, you know, we don't have a grant writer or, and there's been talk about hiring a planner slash grant writer. Um, and, you know, there's been talks, which right. I've been quite active in saying, yes, we need a full-time planner. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I mean, in the meantime, like how long does that take and, you know, who's going to do it and how much, you know, is, are we going to have another contract with you and what does that look like? And, you know, we need to have some discussions about money and, and what, you know, what priorities yeah. um, the town wants to go forward with and finishing up some of the priorities that <clears throat> we still have lingering before adding more um, to the plate. Cause I think we have a lot of things that are sort of incomplete, you know, sure. that, that, that we haven't totally, you know, like going back and looking at our complete streets and seeing, you know, just, there's so many things that are just not fully complete. And, you know, what do we need to finish before putting more on, um, on the table? So I think that there's a lot of discussion and I think that a lot of the ideas that you're talking about are, are great. It's just, we, you know, we need to prioritize them and that's yeah. not really up to me, but. Well, that's part of what our discussion is starting tonight, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, really what's on the list and then how do we prioritize it? Yeah. And just, I mean, everything sounds wonderful and you want to take advantage of money that's available to do other things. It's just, I think we need to finish some of the things that we've started um, and, and or to see who can finish them so we can then start new projects. Um, the subdivision regs are something that's intriguing, um, especially since it's something that we could, well, wouldn't cost a lot, I don't think, I don't know. I mean, we have to plant, draft the new subdivision regs. Denise, I'm also thinking in relation to the new uh, Connecting Communities Initiative that I would certainly be sensitive to uh, wanting to get as much broad input as we could with updating our subdivision regs because I wouldn't want us to be seen as just going rogue. <laughs> Yeah, Denise. Yeah, Chris. I don't. I don't know if you know. There, there is a new committee, and it's called Connecting Community Initiative. And what it is, it's an umbrella committee that is actually not overseen. We have no actual power over any of our co other committees. We're just convening a representative from all the committees in town, and we're taking a look and um, look at everything that needs to be done. And there is a lot, as you said and then prioritizing. And our first goal is to get enough information to go to the Mass Municipal Association Conference and actually secure some funding. But before we do that, we need to have a vision and this is primarily for the downtown. So, you know, what you're talking about is really important. I don't think at this point that is, you know, the first initiative. I mean, it's the senior center, it's the church, it's town hall. Um, a bunch of different things and, and determining whether we're going to fix them, you know, how, how it's going to happen. So um, I think that's really important. My question is, is M.A. Swedland on your committee? Is she, because she, okay, because she's reporting on that. And, you know, we just, we had the first meeting last week. We're having the second one tomorrow and we're really focusing on just two of the buildings. And that would be the former elementary school senior slash senior center and then the church, because it's way too much to try and focus on all of them. And then the next meeting is December 8th, and we'll be focusing on town hall and the library. So, you know, all of this is great information. So, I mean, that's what we're trying to do is get all this together and really prioritize so we can come up with a plan and access some money. And then, um, you know, it's going to take a period of years. But, and that's going to come up also. I think that Casey sent out another email about, um, putting in your applications for the CIPC, the uh, CIPC. Yeah, yeah, capital. I know, Sorry. I'm on that. I, you know, I speak in acronyms now. Yeah, yeah the capital improvements yeah. plan committee. And so 
even if we think that we can't possibly do it this year, we've got to at least, um, you know, come up with a figure to put in, you know, because I, I spoke with, um, with Julie Chalfont from the finance committee and said, you know, this is going to be really difficult because obviously nothing's going to happen, you know, probably in the next year. But she said, it's really important to put that in any way because, because then we'll just keep pushing it out and then, you know, be able to figure things out. So I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah. Rachel or Anne Mary, um, do you recall when we started our list of things that we might want to prioritize to do proactively this year? And when we put subdivision, updating subdivision regs on those lists, do you recall um, what was the impetus for those? I don't remember for, putting that on. No, I don't remember. I mean, I don't know. I wrote it down. <laughs> Do you oh. remember anything, Anne Mary? Hmm. Okay. Housing, solar, nope. MVP. That's all I can think of. I thought accessory dwellings were that housing. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. at the yeah. front of the list. I mean, it's a long list. Yeah. Yeah. I just had down there uh, at some point updating the subdivision regs were something that we felt was um, needed. <clears throat> I know that something that's come up is a way to have <clears throat> legal rentals and residential. Right. Right. And, and a resident and an inventory like. A, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. some of that for college. I don't remember anything about um, subdivision regulations. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Jen? I have the list that you sent to me in an email, yeah. but it doesn't say mm -hmm. subdivision. So that's the six accessory apartments, bylaw, registry, oversight, Deerfield affordable well, housing, inventory of current units. No, I think I actually started a list for Ann Mary because she asked me. Did I ever send it to you? No, I called around to find all the affordable units that were in town. So I called all the different. Oh, thank you. And I have that somewhere. Oh, I would love to see that. I figured you just got too busy. <laughs> no, no, I was working on, I was waiting for somebody from one of the housing authorities to get back to me. Just oh, so thank we you. start a running <laughs> list of how many units we actually have in town. That'd be um, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Then I have, well, um, did you want me to read these or no? You're good. No, no. Thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, they've received the, the, list, I think, also of the overall that we started last fall. Well, um, in terms of sort of uh, putting some direction on this conversation, um, does any, I mean, we haven't mentioned, you, Chris, you had talked also about the Deerfield River flood plain, and we did update our flood plain regs uh, couple of town meetings ago. Um, so, hmm. I mean, again, but I guess going back, are there, you know, zoning bylaws that we, sh that we might consider updating in support of our green municipal vulnerability preparedness plans, or are there other uh, oversight and, um, you know, discussion projects that we might want to make sure that we're part of, although we might still know about that through CCI. <clears throat> Jen? Well, something that, that Annalie and I had talked about earlier was putting in the applications for site plan review and the special permit um, applications that it would, you know, we would add the information of all the new bylaws and think about what future bylaws we may try to add something into into the application packet so that people are aware of these different standards that the town has either approved or you know potentially might approve so just something to think about later well chris maybe with our next mvp meeting um either at the meeting or offline for me as a member of MVP, I could, or we could talk more with MVP about what are initiatives that the that MVP would like to request to the planning board. Would that make sense? 
Yeah. Well, I think what I summarized tonight is is going to end up being what that would include. And I, and again, I think probably for the next year, the the healthy soils and the subdivision regulations are probably the most short term important things. Um, so getting some feedback from the planning board about some of those alternatives that I mentioned in the PowerPoint, things like um, post construction soil standards, you know, how to implement those. Um, what I'd like to probably do is come back to the planning board at another time when we have something developed and bounce some more specific ideas off of you all and just get a feel for whether those are those seem like they would be doable in Deerfield. You know, is it, does it make sense? Is it, is it going to work um, here and how to, how to modify them um, to fit the town's needs? Uh, that's not, I mean, I would appreciate having those recommended discussion items. Okay. Um, and also to maybe in the meantime, um, I can ask the planning board, myself included, to really take a good look at our current subdivision regs so that we kind of know what we're talking about. Denise, did you? Yeah, I just had a question. So Chris, would that make sense, you know, in a meeting like that to also include the Conservation Commission? Because it seems like that would, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Hmm. So maybe we could have a joint meeting. That, yeah. That, would, that could be cool. That's yeah. nice. All right, so Chris, well, um, maybe put that ball in your court in terms of um, when you're ready to sort of see if the two committees and you could review some things. That's helpful. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea because um, you know we, we, there are some parts of the Healthy Soils Initiative that apply directly to the CONCOM and mm -hmm. things like wetlands, uh, wetlands banking um, is a concept that we might want to explore with them. So. Yeah, that's that, that makes a lot of cool. sense. Can I ask All a right. question? Annalee? Yes, Kathy. So so we're looking at, you know, the maintenance and the and the integrity of the soil. Do we have any sense of areas that have a, a healthier soil system than not? One and two, like so I'm thinking about the Oxford lot. And so there's two relatively new constructions on that lot. And this you know, soil initiative wasn't part of the bylaws or the site plan review at the time. But if some other business wanted to go in there and build, could we have an expectation that they meet a standard that the other buildings in that same lot did not have to meet? Do you know what I mean? Could there be conflict in that? And and I think it's really important um, to not just have like, post understanding of that soil, but pre construction of that soil as well. I mean, how are we, you know, maintaining that long term, you know, does it add an extra cost to construction? Is it going to, you know, change somebody's mind about building a new business in the community? I mean, I, I guess there's a lot of questions associated with it. And, you know, where do we hold our ground in that? And, I mean, maybe one of the things we can do is generate a list of questions. It seems like we all tend to have some and we could have some, you know, ideas put forth prior to the next meeting. Cause I, I have a lot of questions rolling around yeah. many, too many for this meeting, no, I... <laughs> like the streets initiative. And what does that mean? And what does that entail? And are we putting our, you know, our, our, electric lines underground and what does this cost? And, you know, it's, it, it really becomes a, a very large conversation and it could it could get very broad and very wide very quick. And I think maybe we could construct some some questions beforehand that might help guide a, a, a larger productive conversation. Yeah, well, very thoughtful comment, Kathy. I, I'll, I'll try to answer a couple of the questions that were in there. Mm -hmm. um, but the yeah. first question about, you know, who, how do you um, apply these um, soil regulations? It's like any other zoning bylaw, basically, you know, it, it, the zoning bylaw will affect any development project that comes in after the adoption at town meeting. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it doesn't matter what happened to the businesses associated, you know, yep. with, with this parcel. 
um, but anything new that's proposed mm. after the adoption would it would it would be affecting those. One of the things you're really kind of looking at with with soils and construction is that oftentimes they'll excavate um, and then they'll replace the soils and the soils will end up being compacted so much that they don't perform the way the original soil did in terms of attenuating stormwater. The stormwater tends to run off and go on to neighboring properties or into the rivers. And um, so that's an issue. Compaction is an issue um, using, you know, a, a post um, construction soil standard would also you know, have things in there for like putting compost into the mix of, of the soil when it gets replaced so that it has the ability to perform like the original soil did before it was disturbed. Yeah. Um, so those are things that I think we could work on and it could be part of, um, you know, your, your existing bylaws without a huge amount of amendment. Sure. Um, it might be a fairly modest amendment to some of the existing special permit or site plan um, bylaws. And we would be working on that over the next nine months and coming up with some more specific ideas for you to consider. Yeah. Um, so those are some of the questions I know you were asking. <laughs> anyway. Thanks. It was helpful. Very. Okay. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. Um, I think this is the beginning of, um, you know, as, as we said earlier on in this year we want to be proactive as well as reactive and this and 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 thoughtfully as you say long term and short term so denise just one last question is, is this something that we, you would uh, put the powerpoint up on the uh, town website because you answered a lot of questions and, and i've seen different questions or certainly comments when the trees were planted people not saying you know, some disparaging remarks about why would these trees be planted? Why are they doing that? And, you know, you answer that question very nicely. And so, but not everyone in town knows that. And so it would be really helpful to get this information out. And I know that's difficult. Well, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up um, <laughs> because actually one of the components of our new grant is to add a new page to the town's website, which is gonna be the climate resiliency page and I've been talking with Jennifer about this already. We've, we've got a kind of a game plan for it. And I'm going to create content on all of these topics so mm -hmm. that anybody who's interested can learn about them. And we're going to put it right onto the town's website. It's going to have a tab for climate resiliency right on the home page. Um, so we, we will be working on that. Well, and the next thing, Chris, is it's wonderful having it on the website. But then we have to figure out how to drive people to the website. Because mm -hmm. just because it exists doesn't mean that people actually look at it. And that's the problem. Right. You know, they right. speak without having an understanding. But thank you. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Can, can I just say one more one sure. last thing about, you know, there's a lot of the stuff that I mentioned in terms of the longer term planning, um, you know, from complete street. It's difficult for an all volunteer board. Um, to address many of those things. And it's even difficult with, you know, a part-time consultant like me to, to try to address something like that. Really, that's the job that a, that a town planner ultimately would have. And, you know, if you had a full-time town planner, they could be writing the grant for Complete Streets and administering that grant and taking some of the burden off of Jen and Casey, you know, to attempt to deal with some of that stuff. And, working with the Franklin Land Trust, for example, on land conservation efforts and using some of the funding that's available for that more effectively. Um, so I guess this is a little bit of a, a pitch for, you know, really pushing for a, a, a town planner. Um, you know, even if it puts me out of business, <laughs> that's fine with me, because I, I think you really need it um, in this town. And I think it would have so many benefits um, in, in the long run. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, yeah, it's on our list, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Chris. Sure. Um, then moving on with um, part of our, um, I guess, new business, um, back uh, really still on our FY22 task list, we had a question of policies um, 
and procedures as well as uh, bylaws. And um, Jen and I had an opportunity to look, a little, look at that list and talk a little bit. And there's basically four areas of uh, planning board policies, procedures, paperwork that seem to have risen to the top and are certainly on our list. Um, those being site plan review application, special permit application, our fee structure and our planning board roles and responsibilities. So what I'm gonna do right now is give you a brief overview of kind of what we discussed and with the, the um, sort of the model of what will perhaps be going forward is that um, Jen, possibly Jen and me and one or two other planning board members would um, comprise like a small working committee to draft, to review what's on the books now, draft some proposed updates and bring those back to the board as a whole to, um, to address so that, um, so that we can make some progress um, and not totally monopolize um, our planning board meetings with being working meetings, although sometimes that might be necessary. Um, one of the first things we talked about was um, looking at our fee structure, our fee structure for our, um, our different applications. I, I, I don't have it in front of me. It was either last updated in 2008 or 2011, so it's pretty... <laughs> pretty ready to be updated. Um, and maybe what we've, what we've talked about is that um, Jen and Sue, and then maybe one other person, not maybe one other person from the planning board um, could work on looking at that fee structure. What it would mean is probably checking with FERCOG to um, find out what fees are in other towns. When was the last time their structures were updated and what are their fees? Um, that how much time is spent within town offices on processing some of these various applications, um, getting some suggestions from Brenda, our accountant, on what she thinks might be reasonable for percentage increases since our last time. Um, so that's with the fee structure. Do you want me to go through kind of what we talked about with all four areas and then <laughs> see how we can <laughs> see whose elbows we can push. Um, planning board, board roles and responsibilities, that's um, probably a fairly straightforward thing too, although as we all know, things often take a lot longer and are more complex than they look like immediately. Um, for the planning board roles and responsibilities, um, it's basically the roles, you know, responsibilities of the officers and the board in general and to some degree staff support. Um, that also potentially could be Jen with one or two other people on the planning board who would work, you know, have a few meetings, review what we've got, and then bring it back to the whole board. Um, for site plan review application and the special permit applications, both of those applications are uh, certainly site plan review more so than um, the special permit. They're fairly com complex applications. Um, and our site plan review, in particular, as we well know, we updated our site plan review bylaws um, at our previous town meeting. And so that application really is in need of some updates, but it was in need of it anyway. Um, we're thinking that the working meeting with that would be comprised of Jen, um, Bob Walden, who works with these things all the time, myself, just because I really want to be more knowledgeable about all of this, and then one or two planning board members. So that's that's the, the overview of people's thoughts. Kathy, Sylvester? Uh, did you, oh, I was just gonna say, it sounds like a lot of meetings. <laughs> and so I'm a little bit um, not feeling in a place where I can make a lot of commitments beyond what I've already got going. So it makes me feel well, we would we would be just on I mean sounds like a lot of meetings for Annalee. Sure. And Jen. <laughs> because we wouldn't be on each of us wouldn't be on all of them. No. 
No. So you kind of hone in no. in one direction, be able no. to no. Um, just be able to get more done if you did it this way. Yeah. Basically, it's three groups. One overlooking site plan review, special permit, one looking at the fee structure, and one looking at planning board roles and responsibilities. The planning board roles and responsibilities is probably the most straightforward followed by fee structure. And then I could imagine that the site plan review and the special permit might be something that we plug away at over a few, you know, number of months. I'd also like, I mean, I'd prefer, I should say, if it was between eight to four or my, because my working hours, because this is, act, I work that and I do the meetings at night. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I, if it was like, you know, at four, for half hour, 4.30 or something, you know, something like that, just because it just, it makes for really, really long days. If I'm adding this on top of all of the other meetings, um, that would be helpful. And a lot of this, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yes, Rachel. No, and then Denise. Oh, I didn't put my hand in. Oops. <laughs> All right, Andrea, uh, Denise, and Andrea. Uh, I, said, I think the fee structure will be pretty straightforward. I think that'll be, you know, a, a, fo a phone call or two and, and getting some things down. I think that would be that very difficult. I'd be happy to work on that. With you. I was going to say that's what I was going to volunteer for. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Don't that's do that, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fine, Andrea, and uh, Denise can work with Jen sure. on. Uh, <laughs> The sure. fee structure, okay. um, uh, roles and responsibilities, we've said is also, that's probably even the most straightforward. I'll, you know, I mean, I, I'm not sure that we need to have more than Jen and me just scratching that one out. Um, I think for, and I'm, and I'm fine with that if you're okay with that, Jen. Um, because we'll be bringing it back to the planning board to review. Um, I think that site plan review and the special permit application, um, I mean, obviously depending on people's daytime schedules, but those are really integral to the planning board and um, really good to have a very thorough knowledge of, as thorough, you know, a good thorough knowledge of, of those processes. So. Emily, it would be yes. Um, Jen, so remember we said if they could, if planning board members could download and and print oh, yes. out, you know, and make comments because that would be super helpful for, like Rachel's been on the board and has you know for so long, and really look at it and and make notes on that and then email it to me, and then with our small working group with you and I, we could go through it and sort of compile what all the other planning board members comments are about those applications and then, you know, come up with something and bring it back to the board to vote on or to. That's, that, yeah. Excellent. And I think also too, then, because we are, the, we will be asking for planning board between now and January and our January meeting to download site plan review application, special permit application, as Jen said, you know, scribble in the margins. Unfortunately, we don't have a electronic copies that you can work on and then send them back. And in the meantime, then you'll sort of know what's involved with the applications and potentially we can, um, somebody will say, oh, hey, I'd really, I'd, I really want to get involved in this. <laughs> Does that sound like a plan? Okay, so great, thanks. Uh, Kathy, did you have something else or not? No? No. Sorry. Okay, good. All right, so um, yes. so wait a minute. What are we settling on, though? Because so what we're settling on is Denise and Andrea are going to work on the fee structure with Jen. Um, I'm going to work on planning board roles and responsibilities with Jen. And I and um, between now and our January third is it January third or January sixth meeting? What is it? The third? Somebody's got that down somewhere. Our January meeting. January we're asking all of the planning board members to download and you do have um, electronic or Jen, I don't know that they don't I'll have just, all they're of online. You, you yeah. know, the site plan review is and the special permit isn't. So what, you know what I'm gonna do is I'll ask Sue, cause she may even have the word version where you could then, mm -hmm. you know, change Much easier. it. 
So yeah. I'll ask her if she has the word version of those two and to email them to all of you. And then you can mark them up and, and then yeah. just send them to me, obviously not everybody. And uh, yes, right. Um, and, um, you've got six weeks to do it in <laughs> until the final week when you do it then. Kathy, what's your book? So Anna Lee, I could work on the planning board roles and responsibilities with you. And that would okay. give a little bit of breathing room to just work on the, with Denise and Andrea. I don't know. What do you oh, think? Thank you. Great. That'd be great. I, I don't want to step in front of you, Jen, but oh. I know you've got a lot of work and like, it's got right. <laughs> It's fine. Okay. No problem. Right. No problem. It was, I was explaining to Annalie earlier that <laughs> this is like a tiny bit of my job. So it's like all the other. Yeah. You know, so I'm glad to help, but it's, um, there's yeah. always lots of other projects. Can we, can we say those, uh, can we say those roles again? I, I just want to make sure yes. I have it right. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll make sure we send those out again to Jen. Can you do that? The 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 roles and responses. Uh, they, they should be in your in your binder. Yeah, they're in, on tab number twenty one in your no. Uh, yes, twenty one in your binder. That's there's these um, yeah, they're planning boards boards rule um, roles and responsibilities. No, no, no. I know that. I was I wanted to write down. I wanted to make sure I had the write notes for the decisions that we all made about the rules that we were taking. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh. oh. you mean, which... did you get the answer to your question in Mary? No, no. you guys <laughs> just volunteered to do stuff. And I'm asking you what you volunteered to do so I can write it down in the notes. <laughs> Denise and Andrea are doing the site plan and special permit with Jen. Uh, and then the fee structure, and... fee structure. Oh, the fee structure. My bad. Uh, Sorry, the fee structure. Woof. This okay. is get it. And then Anna Lee and I will do the planning board roles and responsibilities. Now I'm and looking we'll at the with special permitting. And we're all looking at the special permitting. Anna all Lee and I, I'm looking at two different screens. Who just said Anna Lee and I? Me. Jenna? Kathy. Kathy Petrova. Thank you. Well, so I think we all need some clarity here then. Yeah. Okay, so. Denise and Andrea are working on the fee structure. Annalie and Kathy, which row of, mm -hmm. are doing the, tell, say it again. Annalie, what were we doing? Planning board roles and responsibilities. Okay. Yeah. Both of those previous things, we'll also pull in Jen so she can look at it prior to us taking him back to the planning board. Okay. In consultation with Jen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then as, as far as site plan review and special permit applications are concerned, Jen is going to make sure that we've got That's everybody. The, word, the word documents. We look at it, we make our notes gotcha. and get them back to Jen and then we'll talk about that in January. Awesome. Thank you. That's if I can, if Sue has them, if not, um, I mean, I can convert it because I have no. to be to convert it, but sometimes it makes it all wacky, but we'll do what we can. Right. All right. Um, so moving <laughs> along, we have half an hour left and a few things to discuss still. Um, uh, Bruce St. Peter's is here with some questions and it also ties into, I'll just uh, introduce the fact that there have been some concerns voiced in relation to a lack of compliance with stormwater management plan for the Sugarloaf condos. And um, there's been, to some degree, a little bit of uncertainty as to who has enforcement responsibility. Um, Casey's been looking into that, but I think Bruce also had some additional information on that. Is that a good introduction for you? And I'd, I'd like to invite Bruce to make some comments now oh and we can't hear you bruce no not yet <laughs> there uh, you go i did it for you bruce oh okay I, I did it for you you're all set all right so i lost everybody's picture but okay anyway thank you for your time um you can hear me all right now yep. oh, oh 
Okay, I get I get you, Rachel. <laughs> uh, as Annalise said, uh, I'm kind of doing a little research because we're going to be coming up on where this is going to be turned over to the Homeowners Association probably next spring, early summer. And I'm a little concerned with what's been happening out here. Um, I've been trying to do some preliminary work. I've had kind of a meeting. I was kind of brushed aside. So I'm trying to get a little clarity on the, on the uh, stormwater regulations and, and, and enforcement of them. And uh, going back a couple steps, there's, you know, uh, Chris mentioned it as well as um, this, my concerns are chapter 155, which is stormwater. And there again, the bylaws are one through 179. Anything above 179 are regulations. So therefore they do not have required town approval or anything else. That's up to the particular board. Uh, even in uh, chapter 155, uh, the definition is stormwater authority. The planning board shall be the stormwater authority, which shall have the authority to administer, implement and enforce these stormwater bylaws, et cetera, et cetera. 155.5, the administration, the planning board is hereby designated as the stormwater authority. The stormwater authority shall administer, et cetera, et cetera. Any powers granted or duties imposed on the stormwater authority may be delegated in writing by the stormwater employees to its employees or age, agents. And enforcement is, goes on to say the stormwater authority or an authorized agent shall enforce this bylaw. Okay, so that's pretty much what the, what the bylaw says. Now, chapter 264, which is a subdivision of land, now comes under regulation. Nowhere in there, you know, since the planning board is uh, the authority, these rules and regulations have been adopted under the authority vested in the planning board, which is 12, uh, section 1200. Nowhere in there does it actually give any authority to anybody but the planning board to do any review. But before I go there, I want to keep it, if you keep in mind under definitions, uh, municipal services, this is 2100, municipal services shall mean sewers, surface waters, surface water drains, and other private and public utilities, et cetera, et cetera. And now if you go to the covenant that was signed um, that, um, that is recorded in Franklin County under book 7167, page 96. Uh, there's a section three, which has been signed off for the whole condo project that reads, the undersigned will not sell any condominium unit upon any of the lots within the subdivision is shown on said plan until the completion of the access way and installation of municip municipal services necessary to adequate, adequately serve such lots in accordance with the covenants, conditions, and agreements and terms. Now, unfortunately, this seems like a lot of double negative because all the lots have already been signed off through different covenants. Um, book 7288, page 200. Uh, book 7559, page 112, and uh, book 7355, page 293, which signs off section three of that, which is the municipal services. So what's happened is, is I've, there is some areas here that over time were never taken care of because unfortunately, uh, the sediment and erosion plan, which is on the plans, I guess you're probably the only one from the original committee, Rachel. Uh, so you probably have a lot more insight than uh, anybody else does. Um, the original plans on page 21 and 22 had a very, very extensive um, erosion control plan, none of which has been followed. Uh, and what has happened over the, I've been here for two and a half years. What has happened over two and a half years is because none of that has been follow, uh, followed. Um, a lot of the swales have washed in. Um, there's been sediment built up. The meeting I had, I was kind of pushed aside and said, well, do you want to see this all torn up again? And it's like, 
well, no, we don't want to see it all come out. But it would have never happened had erosion control plans been followed. The project is still continuing, and <clears throat> they still have a lack of this. And the last two storms have been devastating on the other side of the project. Nowhere can I find that the subdivision of land or the planning board has issued any authority to any agent to review these plans other than the planning board itself. And it kind of puts this whole project in a, in a conundrum because I mean, somebody was told that the building commissioner has no authority over there. And based on what I can read, it's really true. The chapter 179, which is zoning in many parts, does um, uh, name the building commissioner building inspector as the enforcement authority. But there again, this is rules and regulations, which has nothing to do with zoning. And there is no specific, well, there again, the planning board or its authorized agent in writing. And I find nothing that there, the only other possibility I see is under chapter 264, uh, section 2200, uh, section 2230, professional and technical assistant. The board may assign as its agents, appropriate town officials, and may from time to time hire professional assistants to review plans and inspect improvements at the cost of the applicant. So I guess what I would like some help, and there again, I understand this is short notice, so nobody's had a chance to review, so I'm not really asking for any answer tonight. I'm just asking for you to help me understand this bylaw in its entirety and I also want to make sure that these covenants that were signed off have not been brought way forward because uh, uh, it's all elsewhere in this 264, it says uh, no covenant should be signed off until everything is completed based on some following sections, which includes a tree planning and everything else, right down to the final inspection. And so I, it, it kind of looks like there's a lot of holes in this whole project. And before a lot of people out here, before this is all turned over and, and, and or there again, the mm. problem is I can't even seem to find out who has the performance guarantee. All I keep saying is it's supposed to provide a performance guarantee, but um, can't even find out who actually has that. Uh, let's see if I can find that real quickly. That is uh, your. Uh... So I'm not so it, without a, a, a specific authorization to the building inspector. I would. It was my assumption that the building inspector is the authorized agent of the planning board. Only under Chapter 179, which is zoning bylaws. And that these it, don't that fall that under. Because that, these are subdivision bylaws. The, these are not subdivision bylaws. These are subdivision rules and regulations. Right. Which is what we were just talking about changing like two seconds ago. And that gave me the heebie-jeebies. Now it gives me the double heebie-jeebies. Um, yeah. <clears throat> See, the rules and regulations, anything above chapter 179, which is uh, 180 through 264, are rules and regulations. And most all the chapters have designated, like the Board of Health, uh, they've designated themselves. Uh, there's right. a support of selectmen uh, uh, a category. The stormwater subdivision, chapter 264, the only author authorized inspector is the planning board itself, as far as I can see, because they have not authorized anybody else, at least for this project. Right. Other than that, and in all reality, um, I think if you ask Bob, um, he is a very competent building official. However, this takes a civil engineer to verify what's going on out here, not a building official. Right. There is a difference. Uh, you know, this is, you saw the plans, Rachel, there's 28 yep. pages of plans. Okay. Yep. And they're, they're, they're very, very good plans. I reviewed them. I spent a lot of hours reviewing them. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Wozneski did a fantastic yeah. job. I, yeah. you know, I really am impressed. And, and, and don't get me wrong, everything has been working way beyond my expectations out here. I mean, you know, we, a, we've had some serious, serious rains. Yeah. And, but mm -hmm. the problem is, it's already, there's already a lot of areas that have silted in 
which means the longevity before major uh, uh, reconstruction yeah. is going to be is going to happen. So the uh, and so I just want to find out one whether the the performance guarantee that keeps mentioned in here is valid and whether the town holds it or planning board holds it or who holds it. And secondly, that it has not been um, bypassed there, somehow. Jump has out. been partially uh, been partially given away as supposedly. I, here again, I don't know whether there's any uh, uh, anything that has been submitted to the planning board is completed in phases, which is required. And by, we have we ha did early on. I remember that, but I, I don't know recently. I'll be honest. That, and that's another right. feature of this is like how it gets managed, how those phases get managed. Cause we have, a, a, you know, it's how many years, Bruce, you've been there two and a half. Did you say yeah, already? Yeah. And yeah. it was all right. You mean you weren't the earliest there were. Other, no, no, you know? we were, we were like number 12, I believe. And it was. A few. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to meet with you on this. Cause I think this is, and this does touch back to what um, Chris pointed to reason like saying, oh, well, you can just change that from the planning board. And in my head of heads, I was thinking, oh, I think we're not going to change something like that without oversight review from somebody else. That sounded fairly back room. Now it sounds like back room could come back and bite you if you don't really come back through and look at the subdivision regulations to see, because and we talked about this. I, I remember at the time we talked about it's great to make a lot of rules. Well, actually, we were talking a lot about signage prior to that. But then with this, you can make a lot of rules. But if nobody's there to enforce them, they're not. This is it. They, but, they lose their significance. Yes. And, and what bothers me a lot is these uh, releases of all these covenants yeah. of this whole project. Yeah. before it's mm -hmm. even completed. And, you know, yeah. how valid are those? Because they're written as, uh, you know, the substantial completion, but and it also, um, it also, at the end, basically says the, uh, um, okay, it's under substantial completion, uh, but the town, we need to look at this. The town, okay. The town, there, therefore, hereby forever releases lots, and that's et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and this is what bothers me is it sounds like that some of these are very conflicting with other parts, and so where does the true validity come up, and whether? You know the residents are going to be stuck with a lot of things, right? In which case, the town has signed off on those, and you know, on a, and there again, I, I don't, as you said, Check not. Unfortunately, we hate to review everything fourteen times, but in this day and age, sometimes it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, Rachel, if you if you're comfortable. Um, Talking with Bruce with the um, goal of really getting a sort of a top line recommendation or to on what what we need to do next, whether or not that you know some some who who probably you know with a fair amount of expertise needs to be involved to try to answer these questions and what are the questions? Yeah. Yeah what has been done and what is supposed to be done. Yeah, yeah. Basically. And, and what has been signed off and what has not been signed off. Right. On the, on the legal end as well. Well, and I think, I mean, I, it sounds like from my initial conversations with Bruce also is that Bruce has done a fair amount of research into this also. So it's gonna be really trying to figure out who can really sharpen their pencils and figure this out more. I don't think Rachel and Bruce aren't, aren't going to go much farther than Bruce has gone already. <laughs> right. Uh, well, unfortunately, I, I, I agree with you. I think it's, it's, it's gone past me. I'm a retired electrician. I'm not a lawyer, you know, and, uh, okay. and, uh, and unfortunately, um, 
it seems to be a huge gap in planning board records for this whole project. I don't know whether they're scattered through throughout the town hall, out in that back storage box or where they are, but uh, it seems to be a huge, huge void as far as the public records go. Jen? You can come and go into our big storage container and... (laughs) And dig through. I've been in there a few times, and I found some very interesting things. But um, I mean, yeah. I have a suggestion too. It's just I've I've heard Bob talk about this quite a bit, and that he's not a professional engineer. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, and and what is he supposed to do? He's going to go out and look at something, and he won't know exactly. You know. And so he feels very uncomfortable about that. And so, you know, where, where do we go? And do, do you know if there's, um, uh, what do you call it? The money that they put aside in case there's problems um, like this? Assurances. Escrow. Escrow. Yeah. Escrow. Yeah. Do you know? Because I had asked, I think I asked Brenda at one point and I, she didn't think that there was because it was not something that the town kept, that it was kept somewhere else. And so I was curious about it because I was Uh like, well, if there's money somewhere else, we could hire an engineer and the engineer could come out and, you know, we have to find that intersect of where the town has to take responsibility of checking these things. Right. Or is that up, is that something that was the applicant's job in Mm -hmm order to have done it correctly. And therefore that's why we have this money in escrow and how do we move forward? And I believe like you were probably there, Bruce, when you met with the, um, the developer out at the site, right? With Bob. That's what I did want to get into at this point, but yeah, he was pretty much told it was none of his business. The developer? Yeah. Or Bob. Bob. Yeah. Yeah. By the developer. By the developer. Okay. Be, because so, because of this vagueness of this, where there was no authority mm-hmm. given in writing to anybody of record to enforce these regulations other than the planning board authority itself. Now, going back to what you were talking about, Jen, is that's the other thing the fallacy is, you know, for all the planning board prerequisites for, plan, for review and so forth, there is a set of fees. However, there doesn't seem to be any fees or a requirement that there be any fees up until it turned around and say, look, it, we need to have this done by a somebody of peer review and you're going to pay for it. Right. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but that's basically where it's left. And I know that did happen. I'm not sure whether it was on the sewer or the water. So don't quote me on that. But um, uh, they did not. They did not have time to do it, and so um, he was forced to hire some an engineer to go out there and inspect those connections. You now, and I don't believe it came from either one of those departments. So I don't know. That might be something to check to see how they went about it. And and, and there again, like I say, it, it, it's, a, it's a very open end statement for anybody to have to agree with that. You know that. Yeah. Somebody can hire somebody when it, at will. Andrea, so it sounds like an engineer is needed, but also an attorney. Mm-hmm. Um, so, is this something that we can um, ask the town attorneys to look into? Um, let me ex- let me check with Casey and see. We have to sort of work backwards. It's like wh- whose responsibility is it? Huh? Is it the? Uh, <laughs> You know where does that that responsibility lie, and then who's going to front the the fees for for hiring the attorney, right? So yeah. once we get our mm-hmm. attorneys involved, like if somebody's going to, if the condo development is then going to sue the town because of the vagueness of the language in the regs, because now there's something. Then our, I could see our attorney getting involved. Well, I was, or, I was actually thinking more of, you know, could the attorney explain to us, okay, because your, uh, this definition says this, that means, because it sounds like it is so vague, we're not sure. So yeah, Bruce, a couple of weeks ago Bruce, when Bruce contacted me first, um, I sort of summarized that and sent an email to Casey. So she may already be, and in fact, requesting mm-hmm. or, or 
wondering whether or not this might be an opportunity for Lisa to get involved or, you know, early okay, on, on. She has that. I'll, I'll follow up with her and see where that's at on, you know, on the things that she's checking with Lisa. I'll also check with Bob and see, you know, just sort of okay. gather minds about so, and, and see how we could, you know, forge forward. And if it's something that Casey says, no, this isn't an, a time to contact our attorneys, then um, try to figure out, you know, by reading these regs, what, how we could change it for the future anyways, right? <laughs> well, then, this is, it, 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 um, may I interject? There is, where there is this performance guarantee, it keeps referring to uh, a um, security of bond if filed or, or deposit shall be approved as the form and matter of execution by the town council or special town council. So somewhere along the line, Lisa should have been involved in this anyway. I so don't it might just be a phone call to say, hey, Lisa, you know, what happened here? Where is this? What is it? How much? What does it cover? I mean, it may be as simple as that, you know, and whether this is guaranteed fund and it has not been touched until there is certified engineering plans done at the end. I just don't want this community to get caught with this transfer. You. No, I don't blame you. you. Did you and, did you send that to me, Bruce, or did you give that to me? Because I remember researching a little bit about it because I was looking for that bond and I'm pretty good at finding stuff. And yeah, I'm not yeah, finding and, it. <laughs> But your, your, your Deerfield stormwater regulations that were adopted on April 4th, 2011, uh, section 10 also. No, but, but what you're reading is that, is that the stormwater regs or is that something that was in the condo um, approval? No, no, this is, this, the one I just read you is under chapter 264 subdivision of uh, land under uh, section 3510. The other one that refers back to the uh, stormwater authority hiring a professional engineer was in the uh, April 4th, 2011 stormwater regs on um, section 10, which were construction inspections. So, so it sounds like perhaps um, between now, potentially between now and our next meeting, Jen can do some scratching around um, and then we'll see <laughs> to what degree Rachel and Bruce might get involved more. We'll have some more discussion on this at our meeting next week or two weeks from now. If that's not enough, I mean, we've got Thanksgiving in there too, Jen. So um, you come back with what you can, okay? It may not be total. And Bruce, you might have some more info. And Jen, I'm sure we'll be probably talking to you offline also. Yeah. Does that sound like a plan, Denise? I just have a question. So Bruce, you said designate an, an authority or, or an agent. Does it mean it can be more than one person? We could designate more than one person. We could designate an engineer and Bob. Uh, well, yes, yes. Okay, so we could yeah. do multiple. Okay. Yeah, so it's, the, question, it's, the it's, engineer it has to be paid. Right. So the question is that. <laughs> well, then we have to look back to see, I think that, yeah. If we, yeah, that's the it. Builders right. should be. <clears throat> Paying for that engineer. Yeah. So, right. as I said, there's so much vagary going on here. It's very hard to uh, tell. And, you know, if you never had a problem, then you don't get into this. But, right. you know, if this is going to save somebody headaches somewhere mm -hmm. down the road, it's time to do it. You know, so right. with, uh, yeah. whether it be for this project or any other project, and that's what you people are there for to do is, yeah. is, is, is to learn from you know, uh, things and keep this town progressing, which, you, you know, you seem to be taking on a handful, all of you, so you're taking on a lot of responsibility very fast, and I wish you luck, you know, so, it's, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, I, I, I went ahead and hoped to get a little quicker, but I didn't realize that you had kind of like an interim meeting between your monthly one, and so that I just figured that, had this out, and I had hoped to have a couple other things but I hadn't been yeah. able to find them yet. This is great, but, though. But I, I mean, the more we good. can get right. a head start on yeah. it, too. But I would like, I would really like to sit down with you, Rachel. And I don't know. You want to give me a call or you want me to call yeah. you? Or Well, yeah. yeah. And let's see how Jen does with what she 
figures out and between the three of you, then we'll get back to what, you know, we'll know where we are for our questions for next meeting. Yes, Jen? So I was just going to make a point of how you keep track of this. Lot There's lots of regulations out there, right? So there's they're all over the place. And this is a point of, of something that we need to keep in mind for our conditions for our site plan review okay. and for our special permit. This is where it would come in that would say, we would like a certified letter from an engineer at, you know, so many points, like even after the project has finished after, you know what I mean? Like those timelines need to be put in because then it would refer back to the regulation. And That's good. Yeah. So just to keep in mind, these are all those things that we could even make a checklist, maybe that when we're writing conditions for different projects and every project's different, you could have a site plan review for something really small, and then you can have something that's this huge development. So, um, but at least if they were on a checklist, you could go down through and eliminate and the ones that are not necessary <laughs> for the small projects, exactly. but, they, but they, none of them would be skipped over. Right. right. And, and is right. there money that needs to be put into an escrow account for X, Y, and Z so that we can go back? I mean, in, in the event that something, event needs something to be. happens. Right. And I mean, I, in, in my former job, it's like, I look back in, in deeds for condos and, or for subdivisions, like the, the, um, it's a, a Amherst woods. So all the streets are in different flowers and they had regulations. For, like, you know, you can't put, a shed. You can't paint your garage door. You can't, you know, and I would go through and people would, you know, we, and we had to enforce that when, no, then people would say, you have to enforce it. I'm like, nope, sorry. That's part of your deed that says, you know, it's yeah. So anyways, there. Uh, All right. Bruce, thank you very much. Rachel, thank you for yeah. wanting to roll up your sleeves also. And Jen, as always, <laughs> thanks. Okay. All okay. right. Um, a couple thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Bruce. Here's See you. They see you in two weeks. Um, as you saw in May, all this this is still kind of other business unanticipated, I guess. Um, we well, you received in mail one letter from um, uh, in regards to our the ANR that we approved last week, and then I also received uh, an email from an abutter um, with some concerns about the ANR as it was um, endorsed by the planning board last meeting. And um, uh, we've had some internal review with Casey that in fact, the planning board did follow all of the ANR regulations and criteria and um, that we feel quite confident that our decision was uh, sound. And so I'll be sending, I mean, with your, approval, um, I'll be sending a letter to both of the people who wrote the letters saying, you know, thank you very much for your concerns that in fact, um, you know, I'll, I'll cite the ANR regulations that we followed. I'll make note that in fact, abutters, and this is interesting, abutters for ANRs are not notified. So people really have to keep their ears open if they're concerned about something going on the box. <laughs> um, and um, leave it at, at that. Uh, do you have any other comments or questions from the planning board about that? But there that was this of... concern that the, the, the property was divided without the notice to the abutters. <clears throat> well, that, one, that was the one butter, a butter, his main concern was, wait a second, how did this happen? None of us were notified. We didn't know this was happening. And the way apparently the way people find out is that it's posted online it's posted in the town hall it's you know it's and, and in fact letters are not sent out to abutters for a and r's so that's kind of just the way it is the other letter that you received you saw that the the person was concerned that um that there was some you know perhaps should not have been <laughs> endorsed and right well, there was some reference, I, and I, this, these are these important things. There's another thing that we did talk about. Just everybody knows what a flag lot is. Those are, no. So, okay, no. so a flag lot has, is they're awkward because it's like the frontage is someplace, but it, then it goes way back and then there's okay. the property behind. 
Mm -hmm. um, this really wasn't technically a flag lot because the distance between the frontage and the bulk of the property just wasn't that big of a property. Um, so, so I can see where there's a concern because a lot of flag lots are not, they're not a, they're not a good development um, protocol, but it's not a flag lot. And so, um, but, but, but it's a good thing to watch out for. And um, so I think that was, that's the only thing I, I thought, you know, I, I think when somebody sees a big property and they getting cut into smaller properties and they get nervous because they, that's a problem, you know, they see that as a problem. I think that was part of the, that's part of the concern. And I don't think that's so off the wall, but that's mm -hmm. just a difference of opinion. Yeah. And Mary and then Jen. Yeah, we are sort of um, vulnerable to be, I mean, sometimes we're ascribed with these, you know, sort of intentions that we don't have also. So sometimes I feel like people come at us thinking that we have intentions that we don't have for some reason. So I, some, you know, I hear that on social media sometimes that, you know, trying to, as, you know, ascribe, um, can't think of the word right now. Um, Ulterior motives. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Sorry, my brain. Um, that aren't there. You know what I mean? So I, I think there might be a whiff of that also. Thank you. I don't know, Jen, do you still have a comment? I'm just going <clears> to <throat> um, add on to what Rachel was saying about flag lots. So there is in our zoning bylaw definition of a flag lot, and it has um, minimal frontage. And then there's a distance that the driveway would be when it opens up to a larger parcel. And then there has to be um, a building like circle. Like there's a, there's certain criteria that um, where the house would sit in the back of the property. Um, so there's, there's a bunch of different criteria for flag lots. Uh, it's just utilizing somebody's property. Let's say they sold off part of their frontage in order to um, get to extra land that was in the back um, and they wanted to do something. So um, there's, you know, different reasons that people would get flag lots. Um, but yeah, like, like Rachel was saying, this isn't a flag lot and it met all the other requirements of your purpose is to divide the property and make different lot lines, period. That are in conformance with uh... Yeah, or, or not, as it was. Yeah. That's why, and that's why I felt that it was important to tag that one because we made it. It's in a residential area, and I thought that was important to do that. Right. Okay. All right. Good. Good discussion. Good things to think about with the the next time I the vision comes up. <clears throat> um, uh, okay. Just a couple of other sort of announcements, and um, I don't know then going on our pending list. Um, I'd mentioned at the last meeting that there had been some concerns about the tur tourism overlay district, whether or not there might be some unintended consequences. Um, and um, the select board is uh, going to be, since they were the ones who initial initiated the, um, the bylaw, um, they're going to be um, sort of advising what to do about uh, some of the concerns that have been brought forward and probably talking with us p potentially, I guess, actually my main thing to you is that we may be um, asked whether or not we can join them at one of their meetings for some discussion, but that still was very preliminary. And so FYI, if you get a, a request, can you come next Wednesday to a select board meeting for this part of their agenda? Um, Campaign finance reports, uh, you received a, an email today, if you haven't seen it yet, that um, we do need to have campaign finance reports uh, submitted, even if you didn't send it, spend any money. <laughs> so <laughs> um, so uh, you, you got those forms. They're due the beginning of January, but they're real quick and easy to just zip off if you. Um, I think we're all in compliance. Oh. Did she say we're not? End of year. It's the end of year. Oh, end of year one. Another one. Oh, Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. The last time I was in there and I complied, I was the last one. That's why I was just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, I don't think we have any public hanging around still for any public comments. 
Um, and I don't know um, otherwise reports, uh, people from attending other meetings, um, any reports to report on? <laughs> uh, Andrea, yes. Open Space and Recreation Committee, the survey has been launched. Please fill out the survey. Um, Let's think uh, about where, where are people accessing that, Andrea? So, I, you mentioned this last so, time and then I start looking around and... Okay, so it is, uh, it is um, on the website, the town website. I, I don't know if it's under Open Space Committee. Jen, you can tell us about that. If you went to the dump, excuse me, the transfer station on Saturday, between 10 and two, we would have handed you a piece of paper. Um, there were two of us who staffed that. We gave out more than a hundred flyers. And in fact, Jen, I have to come in and make more copies because we used up all and I actually had to run to Staples to, um, to get more. And so um, that's, uh, that's uh, another place. It's not gonna happen again. There should, there are some <laughs> copies of the, fl the flyer lists, the, um, the uh, website that you can go to to fill it out online. So- um, Which website? Uh, I don't have it off the top of my head. Where's the town um, website? Is the, look at the town the website town. and look for the open space um, survey. It's, it's being done by a survey monkey this year. However, if you want a paper copy that you can handwrite and someone else will put your data into Survey Monkey, there are some at Town Hall and I will be bringing more tomorrow because we had them at the transfer station and I only handed out about five. People really are interested in doing it online, which right. would be helpful. Um, we'd like this done by December 17th. I've also um, made a little box for you because they were all freaking out. What are we gonna do with this survey? Everybody was running around today. So I said, all right. So I made a little put survey here. Box. Well, we we, uh, we told people to put it in the Dropbox. No, I know, but then the Dropbox people don't know what to do with it. So okay, I made gotcha. another box. So. Yeah, <laughs> it okay. is the 20, it is just the problem of the 21st century. There's information <laughs> everywhere, but you don't know how to get it to them. Yeah. You don't know so, how to do well, it. So um, I sent something out to every, uh, every woman in the women's club. The, um, the people in the condo area have, been re have received uh, a general email from there. Um, it's my understanding it's on Deerfield now. It's on the town website. Tell all your friends. Um, last time this was done, more than seven years ago, we had a response rate of about, there were about 400, between 450 and 500. So 10% response rate, terrible. So we'd like to get that boosted up and everyone in the household can do it. I don't know about the dogs, but um, you can have multiple, uh, multiple people because not everyone will agree. And besides we want as much um, Input. opinion as possible. And just right. interesting, one more little aside, I'm sorry, it's getting late. Um, I bumped into John Pachorik Sr. at the um, transfer station. And I said, oh, I'm with the Open Space Committee. He started yelling at me about how the Open Space Committee is anti-business. I said, no, 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 we're not. And by the way, we're not just talking about keeping land open. We're talking about protecting the open land we already have. So one example might be, you would say, I'm very concerned about invasive species. Could we get some people, you know, a grant perhaps to, you know, work on eliminating invasive species? And he just looked at me and said, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Never thought of that. Uh, so <laughs> it's not just about, you know, saying we're going to take, you know, we're going to not let you develop things or so again, get, get as many um, uh, people to in, uh, respond as possible would be very helpful. Rachel, Thank you, Andrea. Perfect. The survey is on our main page in the center and there's great. Okay, cool. Prominent. <laughs> All right. Okay, here in Washington, it's 6.11 p.m. and I get to go have my dinner and you get to go to bed. <laughs> I don't believe there's anything else. Is there anything else from any other um, planning board members or any other folks? I thought, that, I thought that was a menorah by you. It's not. It's a oh, rake. It's a, yeah. <laughs> All yeah. this time until right this minute. I'm like, that's so funny. Yeah. She's got a menorah out already. I mean, sure, why not? You know, yeah, it's coming no, through. It's, like, it it? it's <laughs> a rake. I'm counting. I'm like, Ooh. no, no, no. <laughs> I'm in a, uh, a a country country look. 
<laughs> All right. Um, great. Thanks, everybody. Our next meeting is uh, December 6th already. My gosh, I hope you all have a good Thanksgiving. And um, we're remote again December 6th. And maybe we'll see each other on January 3rd. That would be nice. Okay. okay. Bye. Thank you.